So you're a pretty serious photographer, but maybe you're not shooting often enough to justify that monthly Adobe subscription. You're looking for software that's a lot more affordable, or in this case, free to edit that occasional raw file. Well, this video is sponsored by ACDC's brand new software, Gemstone Photo Editor 12. And right now, this software is 100% free. Please ignore my jujitsu black eye. Let's get into this video. Now, you've heard me say over the years that I have no problem shooting in JPEG. I don't do tons of editing to my photos, and 99% of the time, JPEG is fine, especially if you're just gonna be uploading the images to the web. But sometimes, I do need to take a shot where I do a lot of pushing and pulling, and I am forced to shoot in RAW, and this actually just happened to me in a real-world situation. So I was just recently in Florida with my wife's family on vacation, and the final day of the trip, they said, Lee, you gotta take a picture of the entire family out on the beach. Now, I did have my camera, but I didn't have a tripod, and I didn't have a light, so I went out to the beach to scout and figure out what I was going to do, and I decided to borrow one of the neighbor's trash cans, and I rolled it out on the beach. I set my camera on top of it, I used it as a tripod, and I faced the family into the sun. So we'd have nice light on ourselves. And then of course, we'd be able to see the sky behind us as well. Yes, my brother-in-law Rusty has his eyes closed. He literally looks like this in every photo I took. He, something was wrong with his eyes that day. I don't know what the deal was, not my fault. It's definitely his fault. But of course, the same thing happens every time I shoot outside at dusk. Everyone goes, oh my gosh, look how beautiful the sky is in the other direction. And yes, it was a really pretty sunset, but I told everybody, I said, I don't have a light, so if I place us in front of that sky and I expose for us, the sky's gonna go pure white, or if I expose for the sky, we're gonna get really, really dark. And they were like, you can do it, Lee, we trust you, Lee. So what I decided to do was take the shot and expose for the sky, because these digital cameras, they retain a lot more detail in the shadows, but if you blow out your highlights too far, you're never going to be able to recover them. So I made sure to get a correct exposure on the sky where I thought it looked good, and now hopefully we can salvage this image by bringing up those shadows and making this image look like it was properly lit. Now this software comes with ACDC RAW, which is kind of like Lightroom. This is how you're going to convert your RAW file and change all of the settings and the colors and the density and everything. And then once we're done with this, we'll move into Gemstone, which is much more similar to Photoshop. So the first thing I wanna do, just under general here, is I wanna just get a close to a correct exposure. And under Fill Light, that's just going to help me push up these shadows. And of course, as I do this, I'm killing that beautiful sky. So I'm hoping with the highlights, I can pull that down a bit. And I'm just gonna be playing with these back and forth to try to get more of a correct, balanced image. So now that we can see some details here, I can zoom in to my brother-in-law, Rusty, and show you that his eyes are closed again, even though the sun was behind us. So uh, it was definitely his fault for ruining these family photos. I'm now gonna jump down to Light IQ, and this is just going to give us a little bit more room to play with these different tones here. Now at this point, I'd probably start to raise the saturation of the vibrance, and I can go back here to general, and I can push up the saturation, and I can get the sky looking kind of good, I can get the, the grass looking good here, but then all of our skin turns neon orange, or neon pink in this case. And uh, I could come in and just lower our skin tones, but there's another way that you can do it with this software here. If I go down to Color EQ, all I have to do is click where I want and pull up or down. So if I pull this down, you can see I'm desaturating just the greens here. So I wanna push the greens up because I want those to be a bit more vibrant. And I'm gonna grab these blues in the sky and I'm gonna push this up a bit. So this is just pinpointing the saturation in individual colors rather than all of the colors going crazy at once. Now, because I shot in RAW, we also have control over our white balance. So I can go up to white balance here. I don't wanna change this a ton. I kind of like the cool color at the end of the day, but if I just warm this up just a littlest bit here, I think I can make it look a little bit better. We've also got some magenta cast across this whole thing so I can pull the tint down a little bit. Just add a little bit more green there. I think that looks good. 
Another way to affect individual colors is with the color wheel here. And if I click, let's say on Katie's blue dress here, I can start pushing and pulling this level. Th this is the uh, saturation. And as you can see, as I push this in, it's showing me the selection of blue that I'm grabbing, right? So if I push this in, I'm removing the selection from the sky and I'm really just hitting the blue in people's clothing. And then once you've made a selection, you can come down here and you can change all of these different parameters. So if I wanted to change the color of everyone's blue clothing, I could just change this uh, hue slider here. If you want to turn off one of these parameters, all you have to do is click this little circle in the upper right hand corner. Now under tone wheels here, this is going to allow you to basically give your image a color grade. You're going to individually be able to change the tones and the shadows, mid-tones, and highlights. This is what they do in every movie to give it a look or a feeling. Um, I don't know that I need to do this for a family portrait, but just to show you how it works, if I wanted to add some blues to the shadows, I would just grab this and push it towards the blues, and you can see kind of like everything turns a little bit more blue. And then what I can do is I can find where the uh, skin tones lie. They're either going to be in the mid-tones or the highlights, and I can start pulling this towards the red side. So as you can see, I've given this kind of like a moody look. Personally, I don't think this works for a family portrait. Uh, so once again, I'm just going to turn this off. Okay, so I think we've got a basic edit here. I'm just going to click Open. And then this is going to open in Gemstone Photo Editor 12. Now you may notice that this looks very familiar to Photoshop. It doesn't have every feature. It doesn't have the pen tool. It doesn't have a bunch of the filters that Photoshop has. But for most photographers, this may be all you need. Using the layers, let's change one aspect of this image. I'll change the color of just my wife's dress here. The first thing I'm going to do is right click on the layer and go to duplicate layer. On this top layer, I am going to click the add a layer mask option. And then I'm going to right click on this and go to pixel targeting. And what this is going to do is allow us to choose uh, very precise colors in this image. So the first thing I'm going to do is click on minimum down here because it's selecting everything. And I know that my wife's dress is that dark blue. So I'm going to push up the blues and you can see it reveals all of the blues in this image. But of course, there's blues in the sky, there's blues in my shirt, but I don't really want that light blue in there. And so what we can do now is we can start removing the selection based on color or based on tone. First of all, I know her dress is very dark, so I can start removing the highlights. Okay, I'm gonna click OK on this, and it's going to create a mask that is only selecting those blue areas. And of course, there's lots of people wearing blue in this image, but I'm gonna show you how to get through that in just one second. I'm going to click on Adjustments and Color EQ. I'm going to click on Hue, click on this little target button here, and then I can click on her dress, and I can start pushing and pulling this and completely change the color of her dress. Let's go with a nice green like that. I think that looks good. The first thing that I'm going to do is click on this diamond right here, and that is going to make this adjustment layer only affect the layer directly below it. But of course, we still have changed all of the blue to teal across this image. So what I need to do is remove these other selections from that mask. And the easiest way to do that is just to take my rectangular marquee tool and highlight her and the baby. And then click on the mask down here. And then I'm going to go to select inverse. And we're going to get the paintbrush. We'll make the paintbrush a bit bigger. Perfect. We will choose black, and then I'm just going to paint away the rest of this image. And it's going to make all of those original blue colors go back to normal. And if I cycle this on and off, you can see that I've changed the color of both her dress and my son's shirt there. Now, as I mentioned before, this software doesn't have all of the same features as Photoshop but it does have a ton of features and filters. You can go to filter and cycle through these. It even has liquify. So if I wanted to give myself an, uh, an egg head here, I could easily do that. Oh, look how good that looks. 
Although this isn't a full-blown replacement for Photoshop, for the average photographer, this may be enough, and you can't beat the price at free. This is beta software right now. They're just trying to get as many photographers as possible to check it out. Go to the link in the description. No strings attached. Download it, check it out. You'll probably like it.